Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Hey everybody, I'm Paul Yeager. This is the MTOM Show podcast, a production of Iowa PBS and the Market to Market TV show. I am super excited and geeking out just a tiny little bit. I love discussions about the economy and renewable fuels, but we're getting science fiction in today. I mean, seriously, we're talking about futuristic autonomous tractors. Electric autonomous tractors. A new machine just came to the University of Missouri in Columbia. And we are going to talk to one of the uh, lead researchers on this project. His name is Dr. Jean Fong Zhu, and he is a professor there at uh, University of Missouri. And we're going to we're going to hear uh, we're going to have a little bit of a philosophy discussion about uh, the industry as a whole. Then we're going to get a tour of this machine and uh, smile because we're going to be on camera. So if you're watching this on YouTube, bear with us just a little bit on some of the on the tour. If you're listening, you're going to want to watch it. I'm sorry. You're just going to want to see this thing. Uh, we don't put it into action. We're in the lab right now today when we have this. But uh, it's a it's a great looking thing. Uh, we're going to talk about precision and sustainable agriculture and just kind of how we're where we're headed in the next five to ten years. If you have any email for me or the program, send it to me at paul.yeager at iowapbs.org. If you have any ideas uh, for what we should get into next or where we should look, that's what I'd like to hear. And uh, I enjoy it, and it really means a lot when you share or tell a friend that you've watched this episode of the MTOM Show podcast. New episodes each and every Tuesday. Now, let's get to class. This is just a beautiful morning to be in the lab, right? I mean, these are the days you enjoy your job yes. instead of being inside. Is that right? That's correct. So you're at the Missouri University of Missouri campus. Your background, though, is uh, you, your undergrad was in China. You're, you have a degree from Washington State. What Are you more of an agriculture background, engineering background? What is it there, doctor? Yeah, so my background is called agricultural engineering. So basically it's a combined agro agronomy and engineering. So that's a, that's an applied degree. Uh, so, yeah. When you grew up, what was the, the dream? Was it to work on a tractor that operates not with a human? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of like a movie when I was grew up, you know, when I was young. I can see how farmers, you know, doing the hard job in field. Uh, you know, they they uh, start very early morning to the very late night. You know, uh, cannot deliver their field. And uh, I really wish we have some robot can help on the farm so they can release the family member to enjoy a dinner time, for example. Right. Uh, we'll get into the benefits benefits of this machine here in a moment. Um, your um, your study has been agricultural or agriculture engineering. So that is trying to make an item better, trying to evolve the technology. And technology is really at the center of mm -hmm. engineering, right? That's 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 correct. So yeah, that's my whole career goal is trying to develop a new technology. Uh, to improve the agriculture production, improve efficiency, make it more sustainable. And also, you know, a professor here to teach the course related to this. So was your thought always to be in the academic side or did you have sights on a, uh, um, a more of the uh, professional business side? So I'm more academic side. So my whole life, uh, part of my whole life, it's spending on campus. I never left the campus. So work with students, other researchers, you know, work with uh, stakeholders. But, you know, my background is really related to academic. Campus life is your life. Some people just never leave college, mm -hmm. and that would be you. That's right. So what's your course load like this fall? What are you teaching? So currently I'm teaching two courses. One course is called uh, Internet of Things for Agriculture. You know, basically teach a student how uh, internet can help farming. 
you know, we, we move everything use uh, online, your smartphone, uh, you know, web apps. And now, of course, I'm teaching students do uh, the capstone project. So my students all enjoy use this new tractor to compare with a diesel tractor, how they can uh, work better, how they can feed it to a uh, different uh, cropping system. That's the two courses I'm teaching. But in spring, I also teach another course called sensors and the control technology for agriculture. I let students went over all the sensor system on the modern machinery, how they make the farming better, performs better. So the sensors, that's key in this autonomous world, right? You have to be able to know where things are at to tell the machine where to go. Is that my, that's a, that's a very gross generalization of what it is that you're teaching, yeah. right? Yeah, sensor is the center of, we call it the digital age of farming, uh, digital agriculture. So sensor is, is a device can digitize all the information, uh, you know, to sense all kind of environment, uh, make the uh, machine perform better. Do you anticipate that technology and agriculture is going to benefit more farming in the United States, farming in Brazil, the world? Where, where do you see technology benefiting a farmer the most? Yes, the technology evolving very quickly. It will benefit the whole world for sure. Uh, U.S. for sure will benefit the most. Uh, because you know we have more land, and uh, we have less farmers on the on, in the field, so we need the technology to assist uh, this work to you know reduce the labor load, uh, working load, and uh, you know to uh, make it more sustainable. Uh, how to convert uh, from like you know the traditional agriculture, for example, diesel based, they have. Uh, you know, the greenhouse gas emission, how they can convert to green energy, uh, you know, to, to uh, convert, uh, contribute to the uh, mission of uh, climate change. If I put a gas engine in front of you, a diesel engine, would you know what to do with it? <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this technology you talked about in the in the very beginning of our chat, allowing the farmer to have a meal with their family. I mean, is are, is autonomy really going to allow us to just walk away from the machine, turn it loose, and come back in an hour? Okay, that's a good question. So technology side, yes. You know, if you think about the autonomous cars, you know, there's no drivers, they can drive on the road, you know, it's similar thing will happen in agriculture. But we need uh, a one more step, you know, to work with uh, the government, uh, getting more uh, the uh, regulation, how, how this can be working field autonomously. Uh, but yes, so in the, in the near future, we can see there's more autonomous system, if not a tractor driving itself, but they will have other system will working autonomously. Like they can they can just do the irrigation without any bother there. Uh, you know, we we anticipate there's there's a potential all the farm machine can run you autonomously, but we need a lot of it to do uh, to make that happen. But yes, I believe that uh, that's our future. When you say we need a lot to make it happen, is it on the, we need broadband internet, we need access to a satellite, we need better technology. Where do you see that we need the quickest uh, improvement to get us where we're going? Okay, yeah, you mentioned a good point. Uh, you know, the, broad, the broadband is one of the challenge right now. We, uh, we are lacking of some coverage in the rural area especially in the, on farms mm -hmm. oh you know i know that the nation is invest a lot of money to uh, improve the coverage it will solve soon and uh, the big challenge i'm involved uh, i'm uh, uh, looking for this uh, autonomous system is you know the real uh, reliability of the machine uh, we need more driving tests because this is the 
uh, you know, new machine, there's, uh, uh, they don't have enough uh, running experience how to operate this. So that's one of my research is working with students, you know, to test this in a, a small farm and uh, figure out a better protocol how to operate this autonomously. Well, I think of the farmers that I've ridden with that have, they sit in the in the cab, they hit the button, and we go down the row. And I think from a safety perspective, I think I feel better knowing that there is an operator within an arm's reach to grab that wheel if need be. D why do we need to get away from that? Okay. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, that's a good question. So you think about you still need the one driver, uh, especially you driving uh, the machinery, uh, you know, you have one person operate it. In a lot of case, you know, you can spend more time working on other important stuff, like uh, uh, you can, you know, do more time to uh, planning what, 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 what to do for your farming. So, you know, Basically, you instead of uh, you know holding one person sitting on the driver's seat, uh, we can we can release the person, and even we can you know let this person operate uh, multiple uh, you know uh, machinery in one field. Like you know we all talk about a fleet of uh, uh, autonomous tractors and working on a, in a field. So uh, I. I guess, you know, why we need to remove that driver, you know, I know people live enjoy driving, but it's still, uh, in some case, you have to sit in there too long. Uh, you know, you think about uh, if you do a planting over uh, day and the night, that still causes a lot of challenge for your uh, health, mm -hmm. safety, uh, for human, how, for farmer, how they improve their well-being. Uh, you know, use the autonomous system will release this kind of pressure. Uh, you know, sensor will tell you tell you when you need to action, and uh, you know the artificial intelligence will take care of the farm machinery, just mimic the human driver. So we we can release that person uh, from you know sitting there. You know, they can enjoy more their uh, personal life. And it yeah, you get to the labor issue. That is that is a big issue, and the the wearing of the brain when you do sit for hundreds of acres mm -hmm. a day because sometimes you can cover yeah. that. All right, so my understanding, the Monarch MK5 or the MKV is behind you. We're going to get to tour mm -hmm. that in just a minute, um, but this is the first autonomous electric tractor available. We've kind of danced a little bit around the whole electric side of thing. What's the benefits of the electric tractor then? So the electric tractor, you know, compared to diesel tractor, the first thing is, you know, it, it don't need, it need a, it's use green energy rather than diesel. You have the uh, greenhouse uh, gas emission. This is more greener, so you can charge it uh, with, uh, you know, for example, solar panels, uh, you know, the windmill, wind, wind uh, mills, so to generate the green energy. The second part I'm enjoy is uh, it has uh, you know the less less you know noise. So when I drive it, it's more quiet, and uh, you don't have too much vibration uh, like the traditional small scale tractor like this. And uh, you know you you can allow this machine working indoor environment. For example, working with animals, uh, they more enjoy this quiet uh, machine, more friendly. And then the third part of 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 this uh, you know battery, you know we 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 are allowed to use this as a power source for a lot of electronic device in field. For example, for me to to my research, I use this tractor as a can be used as a, as a like a, a battery bank, so they can charge my drone, they can charge all my uh, equipment, and even we do uh, some electrical uh, activity in a in a farm that's away from the grid, that will be benefit for uh, for the farming. How long does this battery last? I mean, y you mentioned it can power a lot of things in addition to the mm -hmm. machine, but are we having to pull over and plug in every eight hours, 12 hours? 
Yes, so uh, the battery is has a limitation, just like any electrical device. There's a, that's one of the challenge, even for the car. So this machine typically can last. Uh, it depends on the workload you have. If it is just running there, it may last, you know, uh, eight to eight hours, for example. If you do a tillage, maybe four six hours. It really depends on what kind of uh, implements you put on it, what kind of work it's it doing. So. It, 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 yes, every, I'm sitting here thinking about when you were talking, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, let's see, I'm thinking about the drone that flies and that can only do so much or the other, yeah. it needs power and, or my phone needs that. All right. I've held off long enough. I want to tour this thing. And I, and okay. so if you're watching this on YouTube, mm -hmm. forgive us a little bit, but we're going to take a tour of this, of this machine. Give us a tour here, Dr. Zhu. Uh, what do we have? So if you look at the camera, uh, look at the tractor. Here, here is looking down this part. This is the whole battery. It says lithium ion technology built in. So this is a big battery. It's very heavy. That's the most of the uh, weight of the tractor. It's, it's a whole slide of this battery part. Uh, so that's a power source. Replace the engine of the diesel engine, whatever engine. So uh, this is a middle skill tractor just like any other tractor look at the tire it's a similar and uh you know if there's no difference uh in the driving part so this is all electrical motor of course uh compared to uh you know other engine system to how they make the drive this is a four wheel uh tractor i i want to take a look of uh this part the back of this tractor you can look this is a hydraulic system, uh, like any you know tractor we use on a farm. So it has all kind of you know connectors for your hydraulic you know implement, and there is a three hinge point, three yeah. point hinge. You can you can hold all all kind of device uh, uh, attachment. It depends on what you need. Uh, and I know, see a, I see a PTO shaft in there too, right? Exactly. So there is a PTO shaft. It just work as a category one or category two uh, implement. So you can you can attach any of those as long as you are not over the payload, uh, you know, of the tractor. So it has a limitation of the power compared to the traditional tractor. But uh, you know, with the technology going on this potentially uh, be solved. You know, you can use more battery and uh, more power uh, in the future. But, you know, this is the typical setup of a electrical tractor uh, to make it smaller so it's, it's easy to control. And uh, if you want to use a larger field, this can be, uh, you know, a fleet of tractor working together. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's some of the, uh, uh, you know, in the future, how you can make this work in a, in a larger field more efficiently. Uh, the, most of the technology is on the roof. If you look at the roof, actually there's a computer integrated in, inside of the roof. And here is uh, all different cameras. We can see there's one camera, uh, there's all lights. Here's uh, some cameras, it's called uh, 3D cameras. So basically all, there are six cameras on the roof and then there's supercomputer on the roof too. There's the feature, you know, it's just like other tractor. You can see there is a handle. You can adjust the PTO. You can adjust the uh, three-point hinge. There is the emergency stop. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned, here is some uh, outlet of your power. So you can, you can use it in the, in the field if you, if you want to get a 110 or 220, you know, out, outlets of power. So that, that's this this uh, tractor can provide those as a uh, power source. Uh, so that's a charger point. It's just like any tractor. You use a, uh, any Tesla charger. It's a similar technology they are using. So I'm, uh, I'm climbing up the tractor as we'll see over the screen. I'm not sure you can see it or not. I can see the so monitor there, yep. Yeah, so that's the screen. So if you get a, your password, you are able to see that's a driving mode. Uh, so it's just like any computer. You just press the start button and the tractor will be on. So it shows Did you just the turn map. it on? 
Yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> Hardly <laughs> any noise. Yeah, that's right. So the noise is from, uh, uh, it's charging the hydraulic pump. So you start charging, so it's getting ready to use. Uh, you know, you can see a lot of smart feature. You can see all the connectivity, cellular, Wi-Fi, uh, GPS, and uh, radio. It will connect to the, uh, it's called a station. Basically, you allow you to record all the images. So Let's all see, the... we've lost a little bit of your screen there. Can you show us a little bit oh, of your okay. touch screen again there? There we go. Now that's oh, one of those right. cameras. Uh-huh. Can you see it? Yep, now I can see yeah, it. Yeah, I just yeah, I just uh, touch all different cameras. Uh, this is this is a implement. So if I have something that's attached, you can see that. When you back the, uh, you can see the back camera. It's a side camera. Uh, this is the right side, and it is a front. So the camera itself is not only just show the image. It's used for safety feature. For example, the camera detect anybody in front. It will stop automatically. If like this setup, I cannot drive the tractor because there is objects in front of the tractor, you know, you, it's not allow you to drive forward. If I see somebody on my side too close to the tractor, it will stop. And, uh, you know, if I see something like the attachment is missing, it will stop. There's a lot of a smart feature. It is based on those cameras. And all those this camera used to generate called a 3D uh, perception map. Basically, it's a 3D map. You can see everything around you and allow you to uh, make make it, you know, when you're driving, it, it kind of serves as additional eyes looking around. If there's something happening, it will stop. And uh, yeah, you can adjust this. Like, you know, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to really climb up this truck to do this setup. I can just use my cell phone to do this same setup. I can add a different implement. I can see where is my tractor. And in the future, if I farming, I know, you know, some field like, you know, we did some tests last, uh, last week. Uh, we can see the map is generated. Uh, you know, some work is, is being done uh, in the past. And then you can create a map, like just like a drone. You fly the drone. This tractor also allow you uh, to design the path. So when you you know, farming, you don't need to uh, to go there, drive the tractor. You just plan it uh, through your uh, app that the tractor can go there automatically. Now, I want to make sure when I'm when I'm driving here, uh, I can manually override to drive. So if I wanted to right now, I know you talked about the sensor that mm -hmm. it picks up that tripod in the front. Say you move the tripod. Would your machine be able, would you have to, how do you program it to get out of your parking lot there and, and move? Uh, because that always, to me, is like what the human can do. Is this thing best mm -hmm. set up to, to work in the much bigger wide open space? Or can it also work real well in those tight spaces? That is a good question we need to figure out. And, uh, you know, for example, in this very tight environment, I'm not sure it, it will work or not because, for example, those objects already in front of it, it's within its safety uh, range. It will not drive at all. Sure. Uh, so we probably need to plan a little bit. It's more working better on farm rather than in this environment. Okay. But, you know. We, we need to look into it. <laughs> this is still new to me. I, I, I need to uh, explore more function of this tractor. So let's, I'll, yeah, let's see you again there, doctor. You know, yeah. we, you know handsome man. Well, we got we to gotta yeah, have a little more chat. You. It looks like you have a green uh -huh. machine back there. So what other research do you look to compare? Uh, uh -huh. I mean, what do you think, that, what's the goal of this research right now? So we have different research, you know, one, like I mentioned, uh, our student capstone project, they want to compare this electrical autonomous tractor with a diesel tractor, similar size, how they can work in, you know, row crop setup, for example, uh, to do some uh, uh, tillage, you know, they want to understand the energy consumption, uh, you know, the hours they put, how much saving they can have, the investment uh, of, of return. So those kind of, uh, you know, research we want to do, you know, to understand how this can be used 
in Missouri farming or mm -hmm. Midwest farming system. Yeah. And of course, we, we also want to understand, you know, how this can be used in animal production. Uh, you know, we, we also want to learn this alternative feature, how they can uh, make it smart. Like I mentioned, there are several cameras. Those cameras are able to see the plant, for example. Are they able to detect the disease on a plant? Are they able to, you know, tell, do I need a, you know, different chemical to spray on, on a plant to, you know, for the pest control? Those kind of future we are looking looking for. Okay. Well, I've got you. Speaking of the future, I've got you covering up the camera with your hand there. Got to get you to move. Okay. I can only kind of see you there. Oh, oh, sorry. There we go. I, I we got you on that hand. side. I mean, it's a good profile and all there, doctor. Um. Okay. So you talk about improving things. Um, one thing I had read about the, the, the tractor, the smaller tractor. I mean, we see these incredibly large implements now that are in the field. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. this something where we're going to need two to three of this size tractor to get something done that could be done by a large machine? And is that going to be, A, cost prohibitive for some things? Or is it going to be beneficial because we're not putting the weight in the field? What do you... Help me out understanding the size of this machine and what it's going to have to, to ramp up to be. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, we, we, we really have some concern if you compare it to those uh, larger machines. Uh, you know, a lot of things they cannot do that quick as, as a larger machine. So uh, no one tests that. Again, we are just just imagine this can be done, but uh, you know that's one of the uh, goal of we doing research to find out, you know, costly is this effective compared to a larger machine. Uh, we don't we don't know yet, but uh, you know we anticipate this will work good for small or middle sized farmer. Those farmers, I would say, they are keen to looking for new technology. So this, this is the kind of new technology that you would like to test. Compared right. to the you know, 10,000 acres farming, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Sorry. But... No, that's fine. And that's, that's I think, those questions that, that are being asked. And, and that's what you're going to hopefully get to. Let's go to the very one of the very first things you said. I asked you as a little boy growing up, what did you envision? This You kind of said science fiction. To me, it's science fiction to have an autonomous uh -huh. tractor driving. Give me a map. Five years. 10 years. How science fiction is agriculture going to look? Okay, so that's a lot of, if you heard, there's a lot of uh, initiative over the nation. Uh, university are trying to put a lot of research effort in development called the, you know, farm of the future. Uh, all, a lot of people also call it smart farming. So it's more uh, sustainable and it's, it's more effective. Uh, efficient, and uh, you 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 are climate climate smart. So you know five five to ten years, I would see, uh, you know the farmer will turn to more smart. So you don't need the go to field to do eye uh, scouting. All the sensors, for example, drones, tractor with a sensor, can help to detect the plant status. What action they need to do. Uh, they can do auto autonomously. Uh, you know, there's, well, I can see uh, more automation system will be in, uh, impl uh, implemented in the field. And, uh, you know, farmer uh, will manage it easily and uh, they don't need to make a decision uh, by themselves, but the artificial intelligence system will help this. Oh, okay. I... We'll, I... Yeah, we'll, we'll see a lot of drone flying, uh, you know, automatic tractor running. That's what I'm thinking. Well, and, you know, and I've done interviews on this podcast before talking to the drones that fly. And you, you kind of mentioned the, the scouting of, the, of, the, of the, the weed. I mean, they're doing that or they're distributing fertilizer or chemical uh, via the air. And it's a field of drones that are all about. So, yeah, I think science fiction is going to be real here uh, soon. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with there uh, in Columbia. Yes, yes, that's right. So we... You know, in the University of Missouri, we also uh, establishing a uh, we call the Digital Act Research and Extension Center. We're going to integrate all kind of commercially available technology and the future technology. You know, we will pushing hard in some of the research farms 
we are going to implement implement some of this new technology, test the feasibility, and document their benefit to the future farmers. All right, Dr. Zhu, thank you so much for your time for the tour, uh, and I suppose I got to let you get back to class. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. My thanks to Dr. Jean Fon Zhu from the University of Missouri. Sorry, it was just so easy. I even said so. Zoo like Mizzou? Yes. New episodes each and every Tuesday. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Paul Yeager. Thank you so very much for making this a part of your day. We'll see you next time.